are the types of contracts used in construction? Actually, this is a very good question and it is confusing as well because the moment you go to Google and search the types of contracts in construction, you will just end up finding so many results that are different from each other. That's why in this video, I'm going to be explaining the types of contracts used in construction, but not from my point of view. I'll be referring to two very reliable sources that have talked about this subject number one skills and knowledge of cost engineering sixth edition which is done by the aace international and the second one will be the project management institute authorized exam prep and this is of course the book that you studied to become a pmp or a project management professional so in these two books they have talked about the contracts and let's see now what did they say so as per the aace international we have four types of contracts here to use in the construction and we have the fixed price lump sum contracts and we have the fixed price unit price contracts and we have cost reimbursable contracts and we have target contracts and don't worry we will be looking into each of them just in a moment but before we do that, we have also, as per Project Management Institute, we have three types, which are fixed price contracts and cost reimbursable contracts. And we have time and material contracts, which is T and M. And as we can see, we have the fixed price in both AACE International and PMI. But as per AACE International, they have done the fixed price into two things, lump sum contracts and unit price contracts. But in the PMI, they did only fixed price contracts. The cost reimbursable contracts, we can see it in both sides. And also the target contracts is only in AAC International and the time and the material is there in the PMI. So let's get into a little bit more detail about these things. And if we are meeting for the first time, I am Ahmed Adel and you are watching Cost Engineering Professional. And here I help you develop the required skills and enhance your knowledge to elevate your cost engineering career. So if this is what you want, you can quickly subscribe. So I'm starting here with the types of contracts as per AACE International. As we said, we have the four main types of contracts, which is fixed price lump sum contracts, fixed price unit price contracts, and cost reimbursable contracts and the target contracts. But the thing is that they have also split the fixed price lump sum contracts into two things, fixed price with economic adjustments and fixed price with incentives. And actually a fixed price lump sum contract, as we know, the lump sum contract is just a contract where we have drawings and we have specifications and we have a BOQ and the scope of work is very well defined. So simply someone can just price the project and the agreement can be done for this price. So for example, we will do this building as per these drawings and these specifications for 40 million, let's say. So this 40 million is a lump sum amount and the contract will be lump sum. And as long as there are no changes in the drawings or anything related to the project requirements, then the price of the contract will never change. This is the lump sum contract. But actually we can add two small things, which are the economic adjustments or the incentives. So fixed price with economic adjustment this is the same thing. It's a lump sum contract, fixed price contract, lump sum contract. So as we said, for example, a building is 40 million. So if after signing the project, the price of steel, let's say varied by more than 15%, then in that case, the contractor can claim for a little bit of extra money because the steel price has increased by 15% more than the steel price that the contractor considered at the moment or at the time of signing the contract. So this is what we mean by fixed price with economic adjustment. So it means that the project is lump sum, it's a fixed price, it's a building with 40 million, let's say. But the thing is that if the steel price increased by more than 15%, let's say this percentage is actually not fixed, it has to be agreed and put in the contract. So if the price is changed by this percentage or more, then in that case, the difference in the price of the supply of this item only will be paid additional, either by plus or minus, it will be added or removed from the contract price. So this is what we mean by economic adjustment, because as you know, the metals, aluminum or copper or steel, the prices of metals keeps changing every month. So in that case, that's why some people agree to put the economic adjustments, even if the contract is lump sum. And the second one, which is the fixed price with incentives, is still it's a lump sum contract. It's one building and it is 40 million. 
but we can put some conditions in the contract that, for example, in case finishing the project early by two months, there will be an incentive of 5% extra. So you are just giving a motivation to the contractor who is executing the job. If he finish early, we can give you a reward. So this is what we mean by fixed price with incentive. Of course, the incentive will be conditional, like it will be linked to something to, for example, finishing early, as we said, or anything similar to this. After that, we have the fixed price unit price contracts. And actually, these are a little bit different from the fixed price lump sum contracts, because in the lump sum contracts, the scope of work will be at a specific amount, as we discussed. But when it is a unit price contract, only some parts of the scope will be at a specific price. And you can take an example for this, let's say the painting package or the full ceiling package, where you agree the rate of some different items like bulk heads, gypsum board, gypsum tiles, and cove lights, and curtain pelmet. You just agree the rate. And actually, like in the practice or in the industry, we usually refer to these contracts as remeasured contracts because we are fixing the price per unit, per square meter or per linear meter. What is the price? And then this price can be multiplied by the actual quantity that will be executed at site. So this is what we mean by unit price contracts. These are similar to the what we call remeasured contracts. So this is the second one. The third one is called cost reimbursable contracts. And in these contracts, what do we do? The client will agree with the contractor that the client will be paying the contractor for three things, for the direct cost and for the indirect cost and for the markup. So for example, the client wants to make a building, so he will hire a contractor and the contract will be a cost reimbursable contract. And then the contractor will start the work and with the contractor will calculate the direct cost, the cost of materials, equipment, manpower, subcontractors, all the costs of the things that are spent directly into the project or all the costs that are spent directly into the project, plus the costs that are indirect, which are the overheads and so on. Plus they will agree, let's say 10%, 15%, 7.5%, 12.5%, whatever percentage, as a profit margin so the client will be paying these three things and actually let's say that the fixed price lump sum contracts will be used when the scope is very well defined because easily the contractor can price yes as per these drawings these specifications this boq everything all these documents the price of the project will be let's say 40 million so when you have the full scope when the scope is very well defined then the lump sum contract is the best option. This is the first one. The second one, when we talk about the fixed price, unit price contracts, these contracts are very much fit when you know the items that will be there, but you are not sure about the quantity. So you can agree the rate per item, then you can multiply this rate by whatever quantities executed or delivered or any services that are provided. You measure the quantities later and you multiply them by the rate that you have agreed in the contract. And the third one that we were talking about now, which is the cost reimbursable contracts, these are very fit when the scope is not very much clear so that we cannot calculate the cost now. We have to start working and after we finish the work or like during the work, we will be calculating the direct cost and the indirect cost and the markup and we can submit them to the client and the client will pay of course this puts too much let's say risk on the client because he doesn't know he's starting the project he is signing the agreement and he doesn't know how much will be the total cost of the project and because of that it takes us to the fourth type of contract which is called target contracts so in the target contracts usually the planning and the design of the project will be awarded to the contractor of the project and he will do the planning and the design on cost reimbursable basis. But after the design is ready and everything is there, the contractor will prepare an estimate and negotiate the client to agree a maximum amount that will not be exceeded and not only amount, by the way, it is amount and the duration to execute this work, they will agree the amount and the duration and the amount that they will agree will be the maximum amount that the project price can reach. It cannot reach more than this. Actually, me personally, I have never used this type of contract, but I'm just explaining it 
as per the skills and knowledge of cost engineering, how in the book they explain this. So they say target contracts are generally intended to provide an economic inducement to the contractor to entice completion of work at the lowest possible cost and least amount of time. The contractor will perform the early part of the work like planning, design, and so on, on a cost reimbursable basis. At some point, the contractor will prepare and negotiate with the owner a detailed estimate with a not to exceed cost and the time of performance. So these are the target contracts. Now going to the types of contracts used in construction as per Project Management Institute. And here we can see that we have fixed price contracts and under the fixed price contracts we have three types of contracts the first one is called firm fixed price contracts the second one is fixed price incentive fee contracts and the third one is fixed price with economic price adjustment contracts and actually these are similar to the ones that we have explained previously as per the aace international so the firm fixed price contract is the one that I told you about. It's just a building of 40 million and that's it. As long there are no changes in the scope, nothing changed, drawings and specifications, everything is similar. So the price will be 40 million forever. This is the firm fixed price and that's it. No economic adjustment. The client has nothing to do if the price of steel or any other material went up, down. The client doesn't care. It is a firm fixed price. Price. The second one, which is fixed price incentive fee contracts. These contracts are similar to what we have explained. The contract is 40 million, fine, but there is a condition if he, if the contractor finished early or something, then there can be an incentive or a reward for that. And it can be agreed in the contract, 5% extra, 10% extra if you finish two months early or whatever. So it is exactly similar to what we have discussed before. And the third one is the fixed price with economic price adjustment. And we also discussed that this is the project is 40 million. And if the price of any material has exceeded a certain percentage that is defined in the contract, then in that case, the contractor can claim this amount and the client will pay this amount. It will be a small amount on top of the price of the contract itself, which is 40 million or whatever. Then after this, we have the cost reimbursable contracts. And there we have the cost plus fixed fee contracts, cost plus incentive fee contracts and cost plus award fee. And it is similar to what we have discussed before. Just the contractor will calculate the direct cost and the indirect cost and they will agree a fixed amount or percentage on top of the cost that will be calculated. So it can be either an amount, a fixed amount on top of the cost, 50,000, 100,000, whatever, 1 million. So just a fixed cost that will be added to the contract or it can be a percentage of the cost that we have said, but either amount or percentage, it will be fixed. So the cost that are calculated, the direct cost and the indirect cost plus a fixed fee. The fee can be an amount or a percentage, but it is fixed. It's a 10% of the cost, direct cost plus indirect cost, or it can be a hundred thousand plus the cost plus the indirect cost. So it is something that is fixed. And for the cost plus incentive fee, it is almost similar. The contractor will calculate the direct cost and the indirect cost, but the fee will be paid only if the contractor meets some defined performance criteria like if you finish this project in 10 months i'm going to be paying you the direct cost and the indirect cost in any way i'll pay that but if you finish in 10 months i'll pay you on top of that this much it can be again a percentage or an amount whatever but this will be paid only if you meet a defined performance criteria which means for example finishing the project in 10 months only or in 12 months only, something like that. The third one, which is cost plus award fee. Actually, this one I have never used and I have never seen before. And for me, it looks similar to the cost plus incentive fee. But let's talk or let's see what they have said in the book. It says it's a category of contract that involves payment to the seller for the legitimate actual costs incurred, which are the direct cost and the indirect cost for completed works plus an award fee representing the seller's profit. So it is almost similar to what we have discussed previously, cost plus incentive fee. And I hear that this is used in some entertainment works and stuff like that, but I have not 
used this before to be honest then the last one is called time and the material and time and the material is like for example i want you to paint my apartment and i ask you how much you want to paint the apartment and you will tell me for example let's say 1500 then i will think maybe it is a little bit expensive so i'll tell you what if i buy for you the material and how much you are charging me only for the manpower or for your work only for the application only the material i will buy it for you so you can tell me okay in that case you buy the material and give me 200 for example so i will calculate the cost of material maybe i need to buy 300 material and i will pay for you 200 so it will cost me in the end 500 and for me it will be better than paying for you 1000 and you buy the material and you bring the material and do the application no you just come do the application i will bring for you the material and again this is like a labor work or something that i'm going to be only for the time and i'll bring the material something in this direction so actually the types of contracts as per AACE International and PMI, they look a little bit similar. Of course, there are some small differences are there, but that's fine because in the end, they are talking the same language, like the types of contracts we are using are mostly lump sum or unit price. And also the cost plus is being used in some cases, but it is rare because it puts too much risk on the client as we discussed. So the majority of the works will be the lump sum and the remeasured one. So we are talking about the fixed price lump sum contracts and the fixed price unit price contracts. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.